They're getting that worked out. Everybody, thanks for coming to Continuous Delivery NYC. Uh, with us tonight, uh, we've got Contina, the uh, developer-friendly platform as a service. Uh, thanks, thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, as a reminder, uh, if you're interested in speaking at the CD NYC meetup, just uh, connect with me either through meetup or offline, and we can chat. We've got a few more speakers planned for uh, the next few months, but the calendar is always open for somebody with an interesting topic. Uh, we love war stories. Uh, particularly ones that have gone wrong but then have a happy ending. Uh, but any story is good. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it over to Yari. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yari Kolehmainen, and uh, I'm a CTO and a co-founder of uh, Contena Inc. Uh, we are building a developer-friendly container management platform that is really easy to use and, uh, and uh, really easy to deploy on any cloud or bare metal. Yeah, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how you can uh, build pipeline that actually handles uh, uh, deployment from uh, source code from GitHub to Travis and uh, then content and uh, uh, digital ocean Basically, the production. Yeah. So, first, I'm going to talk a bit about why we are doing this pipeline stuff, why we are doing containers. Why? So, basically, is anyone using containers or Docker right now? Yeah, quite many. Good. How many are integrating uh, Docker in the build pipeline, CI CD pipelines? Yeah, a few hands, good. So, why containers? Basically, the hype behind containers and Docker is that uh, you will get uh, better efficiency from your data center, from your cloud. You can run uh, multiple applications, multiple services in the same box. And uh, you will get uh, really good portability across uh, different environments. Basically, you can run the same image in, uh, in your own laptop, on a test uh, cluster, and uh, in production. And uh, of course, this will give uh, Ops guys or DevOps guys a unified uh, operations interface, because the stuff that you build with containers uh, works across any environment. And uh, this wise man said in 2013 something about continuous delivery. And uh, probably most of you know what it means. So basically, this whole thing uh, focuses on uh, deployability. So you can always de deploy your latest version in the production. And uh, there are like uh, missing pieces there. This is kind of like a practice. It's not the technology. And uh, if you follow these rules, you will get the 100% automation. That's usually a good thing. And why should I care or why should you care about this thing? Because uh, probably speed matters. Uh, maybe your company is competing with uh, some other startup or some other product and you need to ship fe features faster. Uh, with containers, this is possible. At least it makes it easier. And uh, when you have this pipeline ready and running, you can get uh, faster feedback from uh, users or customers because you can always deploy the latest feature, the latest uh, small fix to the uh, hands of customers. So, you reduce risks and you actually believe in the progress. You are, you are not afraid to deploy your <coughs> latest version in the production or, or any environment. And uh, basically, definition of done with this kind of system is that it's deployed to production and it's working. And then some misconceptions with uh, 
with containers and uh, CD, CI-CD pipelines. Because there's much hype around containers, around <laughs> Docker, everything, uh, some people think that uh, when you mix in the containers into these pipelines, everything is smooth and just works. But basically, it's not true. Containers are not any magic bullet here that solves everything for you. You still have to build the actual pipeline. You still have to build the product uh, configuration and stuff like that. And actually, you can do pretty good uh, pipelines without containers if you want. It just needs uh, a bit more work. So, containers can help you. They help in packaging, they help in uh, development phase, and uh, if you are ever built these uh, CI-CD pipelines with, let's say, Jenkins, anyone? How do you handle this configuration management with each of these applications or microservices? Is it smooth sailing or is it the pain? Yeah. Yeah, tears. So, their containers can help, Docker can help, uh, these uh, management platforms can help because they usually take the pain out of configuration management. And you have always the uh, same kind of environment everywhere. And uh, what is this pipeline? I, I think everybody knows that we need to build, we need to test, and uh, the final phase is that we need to deploy. And these phases are true for every pipeline, not just for the containers. And uh, my best practice for this pipeline thing is that you need to script everything. You need to put those scripts in a version control so that they can be tracked. And uh, basically you need to automate everything. You cannot skip any steps here. Otherwise, you are like, uh, you will end up in tears. And uh, with containers, actually, we have the same phases. We have the build, test, deploy. But actually, you are building the image. You are testing the image. And you are deploying the same image. So every phase is basically the same for the application or, or the microservice or what, whatever you are building. So that's good. And with containers, because you are focusing on the actual image, the image versioning matters. So it's really easy to just build uh, images so that you just tag them as latest. And uh, that's like really bad practice. You should try to, try to focus uh, the pipeline so that each build will get a uh, unique uh, revision unique tag, and that way you can uh, actually do some kind of rollbacks to the uh, past versions. And you, you know when you uh, deploy some tag that you will always get the same version. Yeah, and uh, today we are going to build a pipeline. We have some building blocks here, we are using GitHub. Uh, for source control. Then we are using Travis as uh, CI/CD platform. Uh, then uh, Quay is actually storing these uh, images. So we are going to ship image from Travis to Quay. And for the deployment, we are going to use Gondana, my favorite, of course. Uh, and uh, DigitalOcean and uh, Core OS Container Linux. What is GitHub? Everyone knows, right? Yeah. Okay. It's good. What is Travis? Has anyone used Travis before? How many know Travis? Yeah, okay, good. So, Travis is a uh, hosted continuous integration service. Uh, it's used by many, many open source projects out there. 
probably most open source projects use Travis at the moment. And so do we. So basically, Container Platform is uh, using Travis for all test automation, building, and uh, actually releasing stuff to users. And the good part with Travis is that uh, it's integrated with GitHub. So you don't have to actually configure anything. You just uh, enable your repo and uh, then it works. So it's easy to use. And that's good. So what is Quay? Has anyone used this? Yeah, good. So Quay is basically like a Docker Hub. You can store Docker images there. Uh, it has also a build service, so you can actually build your images inside Quay, but today we are just using Travis for that. It's uh, very user-friendly from the web UI point of view, and uh, it has lots of cool features that probably other services don't have. We are not going to focus on those today, but yeah, this is good service. And uh, one good point there is that it actually scans your images for any like uh, security vulnerabilities. So if you are shipping something and you, you, you are not uh, completely sorry if you are safe, Quay will tell you. We might see that today. It might complain that we have some holes in our system. And I, actually, I like uh, Quay more than Docker Hub. It might be just my preference, but way is better for me. Yeah, and what is container? Never heard? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, container is open source container and microservice platform. You probably know Kubernetes and uh, Mesos or DCOS. So Contena is something like that, but much more easier to use, much more easier to maintain. And we try to focus on this thing called developer happiness, because many of these uh, great other great systems are really nice technically, but they might be a bit like um, hard to handle, let's say, like this. So we are focusing on easy to set up, simple to use, mantra, so everything should be just uh, turnkey. You just put it on and then you can forget it. Yeah, and uh, what is container Linux? CoreOS, maybe. So, anybody using CoreOS? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so, okay, CoreOS Container and Linux is a minimal Linux distribution mainly built for containers. It supports Docker and uh, RKT, Rocket, and uh, it's actually very cluster friendly or cloud native. So, it's very good for shipping and deploying containers. And actually, we prefer at Contena to use Core OS, so our automation always uh, tries to deploy or provision Core OS box with uh, content on top. So this is very good. And the final piece here is uh, DigitalOcean. Anyone using this? Yeah. So this is like uh, a bit like AWS, but uh, it doesn't have so many features. It's simple. Uh, you can provision boxes really fast. It takes something like one minute to have a machine running there. And the interface is uh, really slick and smooth. So, yeah, user friendly. Yeah, and now we are trying to build the actual pipeline. I have an amazing to-do application that we are using here, so it's probably the best ever. And uh, 
And this is the pipeline that we are going to, going to build. So this senior developer there, it's me. I, I'm going to do some uh, commits to GitHub. That will trigger a uh, build in Travis. Uh, it will test my to-do application. If everything is smooth, it will push the actual image to QA. And uh, finally, it will trigger deploy to container that will then instruct the actual clusters to deploy them to some environment. And uh, today we are just deploying the production because we don't have any box. Yeah, so let's see how this thing goes. So let's start with uh, uh, Travis. I have my to-do example application running, not running, actually. It's, uh, so source code is in uh, GitHub. It's a very simple application, uh, Sinatra Ruby application that is using uh, MongoDB. And uh, this is connected to Travis. I'm just turning this repo on in Travis and uh, then it's enabled. And uh, in my source code I have this .travis YAML file that will instruct the Travis how to build this actual uh, application and uh, how to run the actual tests. So we can uh, start with this really simple YAML file. Let's see if I can make it bigger. So we are just defining uh, what language we want to use. We are using Ruby, uh, version 2, 3, 1. We need to have MongoDB, and then we are installing every gem that this application needs. And finally, we are just uh, executing the actual test script with our spec. And uh, yeah, we can make small changes in the application so that we can actually see that it builds something. So let's add some features here. And uh, then we are pushing this to GitHub. What happens now is that uh, Travis will notice this uh, git push into GitHub because there is a webhook between uh, GitHub and Travis and it should, should be starting the actual build. You will see it here as uh, yellow created and uh, if we wait a couple of seconds, it will actually start to build the, build the application. And uh, let's see. I think I lost connection to the actual screen. Okay, so now it's actually installing the uh, Ruby inside the VM, or actually I think now in a container, and uh, it will start the MongoDB service, run the tests, and hopefully everything will be free. So we are close to perfection here because now we are pushing the actual code, we are having the build phase and uh, test phase here. And uh, yeah, it's free. 
So these first steps are now done. We, we can trigger the build in Travis, and Travis can do something, and we get green lights. So all good. What? Because uh, <coughs> Travis actually doesn't know anything about uh, Docker or containers. We have to teach teach him to actually do some magic here. So if we have pseudo true, oh, it's not true. It's actually required. Like this. It will instruct the Travis to run this inside a VM. And then we have a root privileges there, and we can actually enable Docker inside this build phase. Like this. So we have a sudo required and the service is MongoDB because we need that for the tests. And then we need Docker for actually building our Docker images. Yeah, but we are not yet instructing Travis how to build the actual image here because we are just running the tests. So let's try to add that also. And by the way, just raise your hand and ask if there is something really weird going on here. So I'll try to answer. So. Let's add something. How many of you know Docker Compose? Ever used that? Yeah. So, because now we are enabling this uh, Docker service in uh, Travis, we are also enabling the Docker Compose. So, I have Docker Compose test YAML in this repo that has the actual application and it has the has all uh, information that we need. Basically, it's here. We have the application, how to build it, and we actually have even the MongoDB, so we could actually test also this uh, application inside these containers that we built. Not only in a, in a Travis, but also in a Docker, if we want. Let's see what happens. So, let's go back to Travis and uh, check the actual build history. It should be running in a um, minute or so, unless the actual airplay shows something. Okay. Improvement. <laughs> Not that one. This one. Uh, 
displays. Oh, trade success. So yeah, Travis was building, and uh, now that we have the Docker Compose built there, it actually built the Docker image inside Travis. You will see the, see the steps here. Uh, it downloaded the uh, image uh, Ruby 2.3.3 Alpine version, and uh, yeah, all all good now. So, we can build the image in Travis. Let's see what, what else we can do. Uh, yeah. Now we have the image there. We could add also uh, one more step to actually test this application also inside Docker using Docker Compose. So first we build the image and then we run the same command rspec spec inside Docker. And why we are doing this? Because we want to ensure that the actual image works. Because if we just test it with Travis, we know that it works in Travis, but the environment is not the same. So we want to test it also with the actual images. Like this. And uh, now we are really close to actually here in uh, step three. We can build the image, we can uh, test the image, and we just need to push it to the query repository. So I'm just to adding a few more steps here, steps here. So let's add environment. Basically, we are adding here uh, encrypted environment variables. So Travis has this uh, feature called secure environment variables. And basically, you can uh, generate these uh, encrypted variables using Travis CLI. So you just say Travis encrypt, and then the actual uh, environment variable, it will output this secure line, and then you can uh, add it to the Travis YAML. So basically, the first line is uh, contain a URL. It, say, it tells uh, Travis to use uh, my master that is actually running in uh, BO. Then the second line is uh, content a token that uh, grants permissions to the actual master. Third one is uh, uh, credentials for the QA. And then I have a couple more environment variables here that basically tells which user are we going to use in uh, QA and uh, which uh, grid or cluster are we going to deploy later today. Like this. And then we need to add, uh, add the actual uh, actual pushing the image to the registry. And uh, I have created uh, deploy script here just to make this a bit easier in Travis. So basically this uh, script does just a Docker login to QA using these uh, encrypted secrets. And uh, then we are using Contena CLI to actually build the image again and pushing it to the QA. So Contena CLI reads Contena YAMLs. It's almost like a Docker Compose YAML, but uh, with superpowers. And actually, you can extend Docker Compose YAML if you want here, but 
I didn't do that actually. So there is this uh, to-do application. It points the image to the QA, my repo. Uh, image stack is coming from a variable. Container YAML has variables with uh, nice features. It can pick uh, variable values from environment. It can generate tokens. It can read tokens from uh, secret storage that is inside Container Master. It's called Vault. But yeah, let's focus on this uh, image thing. So basically, it's uh, building the Docker file and uh, pushing it to the QA repo with these two lines. And we need to add uh, something more here. Just a moment. I will. We need that content CLI. So let's add that. Now it's there. What else we need? Oh yeah, we need to deploy. So this deploy block is run after the actual script succeed. So these are never run if uh, tests or anything fails in this block. And uh, I'm also telling Travis that uh, this deploy should be run only only on uh, Ruby 2.3.1. We don't have any other versions here right now. And only on brands called Travis. I'm pushing all my changes to Travis brands. Yeah. This is easy. Yeah. So let's try it. <laughs> Update, push. Any questions here? Yeah, there. Yeah, why are you building using one Docker file and going using another? Aren't you actually not testing your application? What's the difference between Docker file and testing Docker file? Yeah, 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 good question. So, <clears throat> Because I want to keep my production Docker image slim. That's the reason. So if we take the actual actual Docker file the test, it's pretty simple. It uses the Ruby 2.3.3 Alpine. And uh, it installs all dependencies, including the tests and the development dependencies. And uh, if we take the Docker file, I'm doing the bundle install without development and test. And this has a, a dramatic effect on image size. Only reason. Maybe not the best practice, but I like to keep my images small. Let's see. Okay, while the Travis is doing the matching, we can focus on building the actual infra infrastructure because now we have the image. We might actually even succeed on pushing it to the QA repo. So the last steps are like uh, having the actual production environment where we are deploying this. And uh, yeah, so. How do we do this with uh, Container, with Dio, and with CoreOS Container Linux? It's basically here. So I have exported my uh, uh, Digital Ocean token to my bash, and then I am I'm just issuing a couple of commands Container, Digital Ocean Master Create. It will prompt some, uh, some things from the user like. Uh, which data center you like to use, what is the instance size, and stuff like that. And uh, after a couple of minutes, you will have the master node up and running. And uh, a master is like controlling multiple clusters. It can control just one or multiple. It doesn't matter. You can have like, let's say, 10 clusters connected to the same master. And uh, here I'm just creating the actual production cluster, which content we call this grid. 
uh, I'm just saying that the initial size should be 3. So basically it means that we cannot go less than 3 nodes ever in this cluster. And the reason is that it's running etcd inside the cluster and uh, basically you shouldn't run uh, etcd with less than 3 nodes. Unless you want things to break. And uh, the last step is just to create those three nodes into the cluster. It will ask about the same questions that this master create. So which uh, data center, which uh, like instance type or size. And uh, after a couple of minutes, you will have the actual environment running. I have done this already to save time. But it actually takes like five minutes, trust me. And uh, by default, Container Master is connected to Container Cloud. Container Cloud is a hosted service, it's free, and uh, it shows uh, statistics, metrics, all nice things from your cluster and your microservices in a pretty nice UI. So here are the three nodes. They don't have load. Not much memory consumption at the moment. And uh, I have only one service running there. It's a VPN. Contra has this uh, integrated VPN. So basically, you can jump into the cluster through open VPN connection and uh, poke around with your, let's say, for your like databases or some internal services that you don't want to expose to internet. And because the cluster is running inside a uh, private network, Contra does this automatically. Uh, traffic between nodes is uh, encrypted using IPsec, so it's like a sandbox environment, and that's why we need this VPN connection to actually access those services unless you are exposing them to the internet. Back to Travis, it failed. And uh, let's see what fails here. Yeah, Copper Compose, everything good. Login succeeded, so we have right credentials for a QA. We are building the actual QA image using the container stack build. It's building, it's building, and uh, Actually, push succeeds uh, to QA. So now we should have the image in safe place that we can actually deploy. So this is QA. It has nice web UI, and you can actually uh, see the tag history. I was building latest tag. It's bad practice, but I did it. So, yeah, so I have the application image here, Dacker has latest, but it failed to deploy that. And the reason was that I'm using uh, some external services in my application. One is the MongoDB. And the other one is uh, like uh, ingress load balancer. I, and I didn't have those in my cluster yet. So that's why it failed. And uh, because we are building production pipeline, of course we want to have a high available MongoDB cluster. It's pretty easy with container stacks. So, Stack deployment is just one command. Container stack install some YAML file. It can be on a local file system or, on, or in the uh, internet, it doesn't matter. And the actual file is here. It does some magic, it generates some secret tokens for the MongoDB cluster. It creates automatically Mongo admin password, stores it into the secure vault because you don't want to leak any credentials in your YAML files or in a build system. And then there is uh, the actual uh, MongoDB replica set or cluster. It has three nodes. 
and it has some uh, post-start commands that it will actually execute when we are deploying this MongoDB cluster first time. Let's try that. Stack install. We could do this also from the CI/CD pipeline. I'm just saving time here and running this uh, ad hoc from my computer. I have also the Content Master URI in my laptop and the token, so I have access to the same Content Master. Questions? Yeah? How do you handle data persistence? Yeah, good question. <laughs> so, in this, in this example, I just... Uh, I see statement true, but what does that mean? Yeah, so there are multiple ways to achieve that. This is the easiest way, actually. So you can just say stateful true to Contena, and Contena will create automatically these uh, data volumes and uh, data volume containers. So you can, you can be sure that the actual data is persisted, and you can uh, deploy new versions of MongoDB, do some uh, configuration tweaking there, and the actual data is there. But with stateful true, uh, each of these Mongo instances will be sticky, so they cannot move across nodes because the data is in a local volume. But if you want to have a better persistence, you could use volume drivers. For example, Rexray, that actually uh, creates like neo uh, uh, volumes and uh, attaches those automatically to these services. And actually, Contena can uh, make that really easy. So it will create those DO volumes on the fly. It will format those, and then it will add that stem to the actual container automatically, based on these uh, settings that we have here, that we have like three instances. So it will create three volumes and stuff like that. Yeah. So we have a moment repeater, and uh, we need the actual load balancing also, I have another YAML file for that. And now we have the MongoDB cluster running inside the container grid. And uh, now we even have load balancer running there. And because my configuration said that uh, deploy strategy is daemon, it actually will deploy this uh, ingress load balancer to every node in, uh, in a cluster. So I could hit every public IP now in a cluster and uh, load balancer should say some error message to me. Let's see if I have it here. Yeah. 503. Because we don't have the application there. And the last phase. Let's do some end commit. So that we can trigger the building Travis. So what happens now? It should, should do exactly the same steps, but not fail. Because there is this MongoDB cluster and uh, load balancer in place. Actually, I forgot one thing. I didn't grant permissions to the actual application to the MongoDB cluster, so I need to add that. So let's take that one. Uh, it was this. So I'm just running some ad hoc command into the MongoDB cluster that basically creates a user for the to-do application and uh, gives permission to single database in there. 
you should automate this. Yeah, there it goes. It added a user and uh, if we check the actual content YAML file, there is the secrets block that now actually fetches the same passcode from uh, Content of Vault, from the secrets management, and injects that into the to do application environment on deploy. So it should have access to the MongoDB cluster after Travis has done its magic. Where is the secret now? Where is the secret? In Container. Container Master can store secrets in encrypted form. So basically, those uh, Container Stack install commands will generate automatically these uh, tokens because I have uh, configured them to do that. So there is this to do among password variable. It first tries to fetch it from uh, vault using this key to do among a password. If it doesn't find it, it will create a random string with length of uh, 14. And using this to vault, it will store it automatically to the content of vault. And it's av available for the applications or services. And that same, same mechanism was in the MongoDB cluster YAML file. Let's see. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah how do you scale the master? Like a single point scale the master? Yeah. 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 Basically, master is uh, using uh, MongoDB. So this uh, default way of uh, provisioning master will create a single point of failure. But because the actual master is just a REST API, REST API with, uh, with frames, you can scale it up pretty easily by just giving it the MongoDB connection string. So you could spin up a MongoDB cluster using Compose IO or MongoDB Atlas and just point the master nodes to that, and it works. And later, we will probably provide a hosted master so that you don't have to care about these ugly details. And uh, the master itself, it's not so critical in the way that the actual clusters work if the master goes down. It just doesn't do, of course, any orchestration because it's gone, but the clusters work without the master. And they will uh, reconnect after the master comes out. Great success. It's green. And if we check the deploying application block, we can see that there is uh, creating stack to do. It did trigger deployment of stack to do and deployed it. So probably we should see that in uh, cloud also. Yeah, there is the application. It only has one instance, which is uh, not very good practice, but yeah, we can scale it. And uh, if we try the actual public API of the cluster, we are seeing the actual application now. So, what did happen? I did push some code to GitHub. It triggers build in uh, Travis, and we configure Travis to actual test inside Travis and uh, inside containers, just in case. Then we used Compana CLI to uh, actually push the image to the QA. And uh, also with Container CLI, we instruct that uh, Travis will trigger a deploy to Container Master, and the master instructs the cluster to pull the actual image from the query. 
So yeah. 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 Image. Yeah. Image. What actual content? Oh, I didn't hear. Image. Yeah. yeah. Image. Yeah. Image will contain only application binaries, anything else. Uh, I'm not sure if you, if I understand the question correctly, but uh, application binaries. They are built in this uh, Docker file. You didn't ask that. Okay. Uh, question is, like we have images. We are building binaries and moving to the query. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that image will contain any OS rated feature or just application binary? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm able to answer that, but if you are building a uh, binaries outside of the container. Uh, you have a few things to like consider. You could build those binaries in Travis using these, uh, you know, using these uh, script blocks. Just tell the Travis to have a correct environment, that you have the right build tools there. Uh, then in the first step, just to build the binary. Then you can test that without containers. And then you can uh, actually in Docker file copy that binary into the actual image, into the container, and then test that. So that's possible. So basically if you have you if you have first step that builds the binary, then you run the Docker Compose build, and you have Docker file that actually copy, copies the binary into the container. Then you are all good. Container is the with OS on top of the binaries to run the application. Yeah. Yeah, if, if those binaries are inside the image, then you can just deploy them. Yeah, when, example, when I go to the Microsoft Azure, yeah. and when I'm creating any container, yeah. container has the OS, on top of that one we are giving application binary to run on the top, on the OS. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lightweight operating system will be there, on top of that one application binary will be there. It uses OS and it will run the application. Yeah in this scenario, how the image is creating. We are creating image outside the OS. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think there has to be multiple ways to achieve that. I'm not sure what is the best way. Yeah, to, to try and solve that, you'd probably be looking at something like Habitat to build a sandbox that then builds your binary and then builds a container around that binary or Docker multi-stage builds, which is in their latest unstable release. Um, it should be coming stable later this year that will let you build a Docker file that will set up your entire build ecosystem to build your binary and then have, you know, export that as a intermediary image and then build a new image from that that doesn't have all of those dependencies so that way you can keep it super slim, super secure. But yeah. it, that's a really good problem to solve that really isn't well solved yet. Yeah. Actually, we have been doing so that we have a different uh, like Docker file for the actual build phase. And then we just co copy the binary out of this image and then copy it to the next container that basically doesn't have all the build tools and stuff like that. But it's, it's, uh, it's not very convenient, let's say it, like that. But I think the tools will be there.
within a couple of months, so maybe it gets better. Any other questions? QA? <laughs> No. Nope. Yeah. The quiet before you mentioned that it might show. That quiet might show some vulnerabilities in our container. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Let's see. I'm gonna browse the history here. I can check the latest. Image, it will show the actual layers of the image, which is pretty nice. And then there is this uh, bug icon, security scan. We don't have any. By accident. Because, yeah. Because I accidentally left this uh, APK at busybox here, because this binary has an uh, actual hole and uh, it will trigger this uh, QA in red, but yeah. But it's a nice service, you will see it right away if you have some holes in your container. Anything else? <laughs> 